This is the 2023 Tesla Model X and 2022 Tesla Model Y comparison video. This is the 2023 Tesla Model X long range. Now, right off the bat, all Teslas are great with great performance and handling. But being an SUV that weighs over 6,000 pounds and being able to go from zero to 60 in 3.8 seconds is pretty insane. Slightly slower than a $250,000 Lamborghini Urus and 351 miles of range with the standard 20 inch tires. I have the 22 inch beast, so my range decreases to 332 miles. Our Tesla Model X, AKA Stormbreaker, is an amazing car. The white interior, tri-zone climate control, the yoke steering wheel, panoramic, huge glass curved windshield, and huge interior space. Model X is the perfect car for those who want the most space in an electric SUV. But I can't forget about my OG Tesla, Daddy Chill, the 2022 Tesla Model Y Long Range. Coming standard with Continental Pro Contact RX EV tires, the 19 inch Gemini wheels, I mean, you're either gonna love them or hate them. I ended up switching mine to replica aftermarket wheels and haven't had any regrets. This is the most popular car Tesla sells and for good reason. With the zero to 60 time of 4.8 seconds, this bad boy gets 330 miles on 19 inch wheels. This has been our go-to car for daily drives, road trips, pretty much everything. With the white interior, one piece panoramic glass roof, and all the dogs, the Model Y has been an amazing and fun car to drive. So if money isn't an issue, which one should you get? Well, today I'm gonna be going on a deep dive of all the features with every single car to provide you with the best decision possible. What is up guys? It's Chris with Everyday Chris, and welcome back to my channel. The number one place for Tesla! and everyday life. Now, right away, the biggest difference between the Model X and Model Y is the price points. If I was to get the same Model Y of this year, April of 2023, the price of the Model Y would be $71,000. I have to talk about the month and the year of the prices because knowing Tesla, they're always constantly changing their prices. The beauty with the Model Y is that I may qualify for the $7,500 federal tax credit as well as the California $2,000 credit, but I'm not gonna be including that in the total price. For $71,000, you get the white Model Y long range with 19 inch Gemini wheels, the white interior, and full self-driving. Now, if we were to compare the same configurations with the Model X, the Model X long range with the white paint, the white interior, and 20 inch basic wheels start at $117,000. And because of this price point, you do not qualify for any type of federal or California tax rebate. However, if you do own a business, you do have the ability to write off a portion of the Tesla Model X due to the weight of the vehicle, but I'll talk about that in a second. Overall, it's not cheap at all to own a Tesla Model X, but if you guys have the funds, is it worth it to get over the Model Y? Or if you already have a Model Y, is it worth it to upgrade to the Model X? Before we talk about the specifics, let's talk about the biggest and coolest differences between the Tesla Model X and Model Y. Starting with this. The Model X is the only Tesla in the entire Tesla fleet with auto open and close doors. By sensing your phone as the key, it can open the door itself and close itself by pressing your foot on the brake or by pressing the touch sensitive closed door button. You can also press the handle and it will automatically open. There are sensors all around the door to prevent it from hitting anything. The Model X is the bay magnet car because chivalry is not dead and we can still be a gentleman and open the door for the ladies without even having to get out of the car. If only I had this in college. Another awesome feature that the Model X has that the Model Y doesn't have is this. The ability to play legit high-end computer games in your Tesla as long as Steam supports it. And because the center console USB ports have data transmission, unlike the Model Y and 3, you can plug in your PC keyboard and mouse and play other games as well. Another awesome thing about the Model X is it has a screen tilt feature that allows you to shift the screen left and right 
for better visibility. And because the screen is bigger, you can easily move things around easier like the music and still have access to certain features like navigation. One of the main reasons why we decided to get the Tesla Model X was the Falcon wing doors. You honestly don't realize it until you have kids or you have to put dogs into the second row. But let's just say you're parked next to somebody and your door swings open. You only have like this much space to do all that maneuvering. However, with the Falcon wing doors, you can simply open it and you have all this space to kind of do your business. Put a child in a car seat, put the dogs up here, anything you want. And the beauty with the Falcon wing doors is it also has all these sensors around the door so it doesn't hit you. But the caveat, because the doors are so complex with all these moving parts, you have to deal with any issues that arise, like if you're parked on a hill and the door tries closing and it won't close. So far, I've had my Tesla Model X for a few months now, and I've already taken it into service three times for the Falcon wing doors. Overall, I love the Falcon wing doors. I definitely don't regret it. So now we got the obviously cool features of the Tesla Model X out of the way. Let's talk about specifics. Starting with the Model Y. Available in a five or seven seater, the Model Y offers great utility for its price point. If you guys are watching this and are considering between the Model 3 and Model Y, I have a separate video for that. The Model Y is Tesla's best selling car ever and it makes sense. It offers the most utility and it's the most practical if you have kids or if you ever have to do any Costco runs or if you have to move anything. With a length of 187 inches and a width of 84 inches, the Model Y isn't too big or too small. It's about 64 inches in height. The Model Y is tall enough where you don't feel like you're dropping down into a car like a smaller SUV. But it's not too tall where you have to leap into the car with a ground clearance of 6.2 inches. Overall, I have no trouble parking in parking spots or in tight garage spaces. Now, moving on to the Model X. Now, when I saw the Model X on the roads, I thought to myself, the car is huge compared to the Model Y. However, comparing both cars side by side, the Model X isn't that much bigger than the Model Y from a first look. However, with its adaptive suspension, as well as the super roomy interior, the Model X is definitely bigger. The Model X is 199 inches long, 89 and a half inches wide, and the height can vary based on wheels as well as their adaptive air suspension. On medium, it's 66 inches tall, and with the Model X ground clearance, it can go anywhere from 5.7 all the way to 8.1 inches on the low and high suspension setting. Overall, the Model X is definitely a bigger car than the Model Y. I usually have a difficult time washing the roof of the Model X on the low setting and I'm six foot three. When parking the Model X in parking spots is usually when I really miss my 360 panoramic view camera. Yeah, it's nice to have some cameras turn on, which helps a lot, but I still miss it. You can easily tell that the Model X is much larger then the Model Y side by side in the garage. I think what really sets apart the Model X from the Model Y is the interior space. When you get into the Y, everything is just closer together. The distance from the dashboard is shorter. Passenger seat to the driver's seat is closer. I mean, none of this stuff is a bad thing, it's just different. One thing I love about Teslas is that they're made for tall people. Even the small Model 3 allows ample headspace for myself. With the Model Y, you get 41 inches of headroom in the front with the amazing panoramic single piece glass roof and a solid 39 inches in the rear. As far as legroom, you get plenty in the front at 41.8 inches. The rears are slightly more cramped at 40.5 inches. However, you can electronically recline the seats to provide slightly more space. Shoulder room in the front is at 56.4 inches and I never had any issues. Even in the rears, the Model Y gives you 54 inches and my three big cousins were able to make it during a 10 hour drive from Orange County to the Zion Narrows without any issues. One quick tip is I had no idea, but the middle seat headrest can go up. Something I didn't realize until we were almost back home from our long road trip. Hip room in the front is 53.8 inches and in the rears is 50.6 inches. With the seven seater, you get slightly decreased headroom in the second row and the third row provides 34.6 inches of headroom. The legroom is adjustable with the second and third rows, but you can get up to 26.5 inches of legroom in the third row. You get 41 inches of shoulder room and 36.5 inches of hip room in the third row. And honestly, the third row I think is mostly for smaller kids. The Model Y is still pretty tall as well and can open up to 7.5 feet high. 
As far as the Model X goes, everything just seems bigger. Three dogs ain't no joke, especially when your firstborn wants to only be in the front seat. In the front, you get 41.7 inches of headroom, which is surprising since the Model Y gives you 41 inches. What really helps with the headroom in the front is the huge glass curved windshield. In the rears, the Falcon Wing door window cuts out, giving you a solid 41 inches. But in the middle seat, because the roof goes in, you get way less space. So you pay for a $100,000 car, and yet the levers to adjust the seat backs is manual. Like I'm in a freaking Toyota Camry, bruh. Look at this. Anyways, I digress. Weirdly, you get more legroom in the Model Y compared to the Model X. As the X gives you 41.1 inches of legroom in the front and 38.7 inches of legroom in the second row. Now here is where the Model X shines, shoulder room. Look at all this space between me and the seatbelt thing. It's like this much space. I have so much more space, it's so much more open. With the Model X, you get 60.7 inches of shoulder room in the front seats and 56.9 inches in the second row. You also get more hip room at 55.7 inches in the front and 58.9 inches in the second row. With the trunk height on the low setting on the Tesla Model X, my wife can barely press the button to close the trunk. And she's a solid 5.5. Five. At its highest setting, the Model X trunk can open up to eight feet high, which is super high. So overall, while the Model X is bigger, it's not that much bigger for most measurements. The shoulder and hip room is definitely huge. And that's the reason why I love the Model X so much more. The Model X has a five, six, and seven seating layout. With the six seater, you get two captain's chairs in the second row that doesn't lie flat, decreasing your cargo space. Again, there is a seven seater Model Y, but it's tight in the back. The Model Y, as you probably know by now, is super minimalistic in the interior. You're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. It comes in white or black. Black has a wooden dashboard and the white has a white dashboard. Although mine is a Hills Wood custom dashboard, which I still love to this day. The white seats are very stain resistant, although I still coated mine. A few things to notice is that they didn't finish the fake leather on the sides. So it's cloth and that gets dirty real quick compared to the X, which is leather all around. It's like they went out of their way when they made the Tesla Model Y to save as much money as they could, removing as many little things as possible. The door panels are not updated so that it continues as one piece from the door to the dashboard with black Alcantara on the side doors. There are rumors that they are completely going to update the interior again once the Model 3 refresh comes out, so stay tuned for that. These seats are super comfortable and the driver has four-way lumbar support, but no lumbar support in the passenger side because Elon said nobody used it. The seats are heated, which is nice, but no vented cooled seats. The rear seats in the Model Y can be folded in a 40-20 split. So you could just put down the middle if you're carrying long cargo. However, aside from your donut steering wheel, you get this simple 15 inch display that holds all your information, including your speed. In the center, you have your dual wireless charging, a center console with a giant hole and no center console tray. You have two USB-C ports that are for charging only and not for any sort of data transmission. And in the rears, you get two USB-C ports as well. You also get cup holders in the center armrest in the rears. The Model Y comes with a 13 speaker audio system, which I found to be good, but not amazing. The interior has basic LED lights for your feet, buttons for lights in the rears. As basic as this sounds, I have to talk about it because I have to compare it to the Model X. But one thing Tesla didn't care too much about with the Model Y was soundproofing. On the Y doors, they have one basic door seal. You get dual pane glass at the front, but not in the rears. You also get one giant rubber seal that stretches along the inside of the door. In the hatch, you have metal exposed everywhere, but at least they covered it in the front. Now, unlike the Model Y, they really put everything into the Model X, including as much sound dampening as possible. Starting with the seals. First off, on the outside of the doors, you have an upper seal to prevent any wind noise from coming in. The seal that goes into the top of the front doors as well. You also get another door seal on the inside, and you get one door seal on the doors. However, you do get dual pane glass in both front and rear glass windows. And in the rear windows, you get this nice felt material that helps cushion the windows and prevents even more noise. On the inside, they put seals on the windows to prevent even more wind noise from coming into the cabin. As far as bare metal, 
There's none you can find in the trunk of the Model X. They put way more thought into the Model X and they should be at double the cost. Inside, you get a more refined interior with fabric, LED lighting strips in various areas, which I honestly think are too dark and not bright enough. Overall, with the way the LED strips and plugs are designed, it makes aftermarket upgrades more difficult. You get an amazing 22 speaker system with something special called active road noise cancellation that works at providing a decrease in road noise near the headrests. However, I found it doesn't really work well and it has to calibrate every drive. You get two beautiful displays, one 17 inch one that can rotate left or right. You also have a 12.3 inch driver display with more information, which in my opinion is kind of useless, but I'll talk about that later. And behind in the rear seats, you have an eight inch display that can control climate, play movies, and control the music. The seats in the X are upgraded as well and offer not only heated, but cooled ventilated seats in the driver and passenger. You can choose between white, black, and cream. And unlike the Y, if you upgrade to the performance model, your interior switches from wood to carbon fiber. And unlike the Y, the driver and passenger have four-way lumbar support. Again, with the X and S, you can now choose between a yoke or round steering wheel free of charge. But if you change your mind after, it does cost an extra $700. I just did a video where I compared the yoke steering wheel to a regular steering wheel, so check that out if you're debating. You get wireless charging, a magnetic lid for your center console, hidden storage and hidden cup holders. And in the rear under the screen, you get USB-C charging as well as two more cup holders. Also, I found this out recently, but these vents in the trunk or in the third row serve no useful purpose. They don't provide any direct airflow, but it does supposedly provide passive airflow from driving. I honestly wish there were more features with the Model X to make it more enticing. I mean, would have killed to put some massage seats, some colored LEDs, something. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below what features you'd love in the perfect car. One thing I love about the Model X is its storage space. Let's start off with the front. I can get out first. Oh God. You get this gigantic frunk at 6.5 cubic feet. Although it's not big as other car competitors like the Rivian. And you also don't get any drain ports or any type of outlets. It's about 19 inches deep, 45 inches wide, and about 18 inches long. Now, when we were choosing the Model X, one deciding factor between getting the six seater and five seater layout was of course you're gonna have kids. I mean, having kids, it's nice to have the six seater. However, for us, it was the cargo space. We wanted more cargo space because of our dogs and in case of emergency, we have to carry on a ton of stuff. And the beauty with the five seater is you could simply just lower all the seats and you have so much more cargo space. But how much more? With the Model X, you have no button to lower the second row. So the only way to lower the seats is to literally open the Falcon wing doors, lower the seat, and then close on both sides. With the second row down, you get 85.1 cubic feet of storage space, which is enough for me to lay flat and for us to go camping in. Video coming soon. Make sure you guys subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss it. From the trunk to the edge of the second row, you get a whopping 69 inches. Now with all the trunk space, we're gonna go ahead, see how many suitcases fill up. Look at this. I can just put it in here like so. Unlike the Model Y, where I have to open it like this and I have no space. All right, close test. You can easily hold four luggages. There's some space here and two garage totes, no problem. With the second row seats up, you still get a good amount of cargo space at 37.1 cubic feet. And from the trunk to the edge of the seat, you still have a solid 45 inches. What I love about the five-seater Model X is all the trunk well storage compartments that are huge. And you get two of them. It offers a ton of storage space. In the trunk, you have a giant hole in the left, but because you pay more, Tesla said, hey, Let's give you a mesh net to place smaller items on the right. So overall, as far as storage space goes, the Model X has a ton of storage space. But what about the Model Y? The Model Y frunk is smaller, but still solid enough to hold a ton of water bottles or anything at 4.1 cubic feet. It measures, I'd say about 
17 inches deep, 17 inches wide, and 33 inches long. Now with the Model Y, in the trunk you have switches to lower the second row in case you want to lower the seats quicker which is a super nifty feature. With the second row down in the Model Y, you get a ton of space measuring about 72 cubic feet. Although being six foot three, if I were to lay down in the Model Y, I'd have to lay down at an angle, but it still works. From the trunk to the second row seat edge, you get about 69 inches. And although it is smaller than the Model X, you can still fit a good amount of suitcases and garage totes. So not bad, I mean, only one less bag. Let's see if this closes. The second row seat up, you get 30.2 cubic feet of storage. And from the trunk to the second row, it's about 44 inches. You also have two trunk wheel well storage compartments as well in the Model Y, although it is much smaller. You have two giant holes for storage and a cigarette outlet as well. Now, one thing potential Model X owners and current Model Y owners want to know is how is the ride comfort in the Model X? I know a lot of friends were debating between getting the Model X, and the first thing they wanted to know was, is it more comfortable than the Model Y? Man, I got some rich friends. If you didn't know, the Model Y recently updated their suspension coined Comfort Suspension, which is supposed to provide a softer and less harsh ride. With the 19-inch wheels, you get a slightly bumpy ride, but it can be mitigated by lowering the tire pressure. Even with the 21 inch Uber turbine wheels, the ride isn't that bumpy. Overall, 50,000 miles in with the bumpier suspension in our Tesla Model Y, we have no complaints. I will say, however, this car isn't a Lexus, so you definitely will feel a lot more of those road bumps. However, your handling is still much better. So I wanted to do a quick test between the ride comfort comparison between the Model X and Model Y. So nauseous warning, if you get nauseous easily, make sure you just skip this entire part. So here's some unedited footage of how the camera records the bumps in the Tesla Model Y. And here it is on the Model X. It depends on the suspension setting you have, but on comfort, here's how it looks. Definitely not as bumpy. And on sport, here's how it looks. So here it is on the sport suspension. What makes the Model X so unique and expensive is the adaptive suspension. There are five levels to choose from. You can get low like the low rider, or you can go to very high and go off-roading, baby. And a cool feature is it can remember when you raise or lower the suspension at a certain location, which is very useful if you have a Model S since it's so low to the ground and you don't want to damage the underside. But if you want your Model X to be lower or higher, let's say when you're at home, you can do that as well. It also shows your suspension data in real time, even though I have no idea what all these things mean. Second, you can choose from comfort, auto, sport, and advanced where you can fine tune it yourself. They even have a feature where the suspension will default to comfort mode when on autopilot, which is usually on long road freeway drives. Overall, a huge difference in ride comfort between the Model X and the Model Y. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, one of my pet peeves with any car, bad headlights. So let's go ahead and talk about how much I hate the Model X lighting. Not sure why, but the Model X, you can't adjust the headlights like you can in the Model Y. Unlike my Lexus, when starting the car, the headlights don't auto level. I found the beam to be slightly too low, but because they are reflectors, I mean reflectors seriously with a $100,000 car, you'd expect projector headlights. And if you don't know what I mean projector, you'll know it's a projector headlight because it's circular and it kind of looks all magnified. How reflector ones are just, you know, reflector ones. And it sucks because the light output isn't as good. And also there's so much more glare, so it blinds oncoming traffic. No bueno. The light output at night isn't good at all when you compare it to the Model Y which is also a reflector headlight. I think it's crazy that the daytime running lamp actually seems brighter than the headlights. However, I do like how the Model X has adaptive headlights where if you use the turn signal or turn the steering wheel, additional lights light up to provide more illumination on that side. But again, it's not even that bright. Since the Model X refresh, they didn't update the headlights, but they did update the fog lights. The fog lights are now projectors and you can get a nice daytime running light LED bar similar to the Model 3 and Model Y, 
with turn signals built in. In the X, you get a super cool feature that's mostly standard in all German cars, rear fog lights. Basically, you get added red lights to provide more safety in foggy weather. Now, with the Model Y long range, you get reflector LED headlights and projector LED fog lights. However, with the Model Y Performance, you get projector matrix LED headlights as well. You have a small daytime running LED bar at the bottom and a daytime running light at the top of the headlight. The light output is very good and I can't complain, but again, it's not the best. It would be if it had projectors. There's a super secret feature that for some reason Tesla doesn't want to tell you or share with you guys. I'm not sure why they don't allow us to turn it on or use, but there is a rear fog light in the Tesla Model Y. However, it's only activated when you have the smart summon feature enabled. So now we got the physical stuff out of the way, let's talk software. Now between you and me, I honestly think all the software engineers drive Model 3 and Model Ys because for some reason they put so much more effort into that software compared to the Model S and X. Because honestly, the software in the Model X and S refresh seems outdated and lagging behind the Model 3 and Model Y. Like let's talk about a basic one, the camera image turn signals. Something that came out recently in the Model 3 and Model Y is when you use a turn signal, the camera image pops up, allowing you to see that lane and prevent any blind spots. And now with the recent update, you can move that image to different locations. It's just more intuitive and easier to look at. However, in the Model X, it's still stuck in the middle of the screen, taking up so much space and you can't move it. Another huge one. With the Model 3 and Model Y, everything is on the center display, like your driving images and everything. That's all good and all because it's touch sensitive. You can move your car in a 360 view to see everything around the car, which is very useful if you want to see something completely behind the car. You can zoom in and all that stuff. With the X, because they had so many screens, they had to put something in that center dash display. They were like, let's go ahead and put some driving visualizations in there. But oh wait, I completely forgot. The driver display isn't touch sensitive at all and doesn't move, which means you can't look behind your car and you can't zoom in. You can't do all those awesome features that you can do with the Model 3 and Model Y. And another annoying thing is the fact that the right scroll wheel on the yoke steering isn't the same as a Model 3 and Model Y. What I mean by that is with the right scroll wheel, it's supposed to control all the features of autopilot, raising or lowering your speed, as well as the cruise control distance. However, on the yoke, you can't control the cruise control distance and instead have to go to the menu, find it on the screen and do it that way. And another annoying thing, because all that important information is located on that center display in front of the driver. I can't do something that I love to do in the Model Y. If I'm on autopilot, I can quickly adjust the speed to my offset or current speed by simply pressing the speed sign. However, in the Model X, I can't do that. And another annoying thing, because the battery percentage and miles is located on that center display in front of the driver and you can't touch it, you can't do things on the fly like change from percentage to miles easily like you can with the 3 and Model Y. I mean, with the navigation on the X, it shows on the big screen, but also pops up on the center screen. Why can't they do this with the more important driving visualizations and put it on that 17 inch center screen as well? But the beauty with Tesla is they're always adding new features. They can easily do all those things I said in a software update, no problem. Anyways, with both cars, we have bioweapon defense mode or a giant HEPA filter that filters any pollen, smog, or smells. With the X, it comes standard with Homelink, unlike the Y and 3 where you have to purchase it separately. The Model X has tri-zone climate control where you can independently control the temperature and fan speed in the driver, passenger, and rears. Whereas the Model Y is only dual zone controlled where you can't control the temperature in the rears. I also noticed something interesting that's in the Y, but for some reason, it's just not in the X. I did a video where I took the Y in the snow and one feature that really helped with traction was something called off-road assist. However, the Model X being an SUV, there's no off-road assist option. I'm not sure if it's because the Model X does such a great job anyways in snow, so they don't even need it, but I'm definitely gonna take it to the snow next year to find out. So overall, those are the biggest differences between Stormbreaker and Daddy Chill. Let's quickly talk about one of the big reasons to get the Model X over the Model Y, especially if you own a business. Now, I'm no accountant, I'm not a CPA, so make sure you guys talk to your tax advisor for more details. 
But if you have your own business, there's something called Section 179. It's from the IRS that allows you to write off a portion of your vehicle. The only way to meet that criteria, however, is if the gross vehicle weight rating is over 6,000 pounds and it's used over 50% for business use. Again, talk to your accountant for more details, but that's why a lot of business owners can write off stuff like our G-Wagon and all those crazy cars because they're so heavy. But again, that's another huge difference between the Model X and Model Y because the Model Y does not qualify for that business write-off. Another thing a lot of people don't talk about is because the Model X is so much more expensive, your car insurance is gonna be that much more expensive per month. I just did a video where I compared different car insurance companies with my Tesla Model Y, and I didn't even wanna dive down into the specifics with the Model X because of how much more expensive the car insurance was. So there you have it. While costing twice as much as the Model Y, the Model X has a lot to offer. But is it worth it? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you guys next time.